Imagine that you're in a web meeting and you want to share something with your audience, like a whiteboard or a document. Maybe you have a giant book and it's got all sorts of art in it and, and you want to show the details of the art and you want to you know teach uh, you know students about different things and you want to share this with meeting folks well you could grab your computer and you could kind of try to hold it up there or use your built-in webcam and let's face it that's not working out that's not working out at all we can solve this problem the first thing that we're going to do is go to reincubate.com that's a software developer for camo and they have a number of different products. So underneath products, you'll go in there. You'll see their other products in here, but we're going to go to Reincubate Camo. And it's available for several different platforms. It detects that I'm on Windows. It gives me the option to upgrade. And I could choose a different platform as well. Later on, I'll show this running on a Mac as well. And so we'll go to Windows and download the software. Pretty quick download. It's very small. We'll open the file. And when we open it up, it's going to give us the option to install it. So I'll take the defaults, I'll install it, and I'll now have it installed on my system. I already have it installed, so I won't go through the whole procedure there. It's pretty quick. And then when I go in and I go in Camo Studio, it'll bring up the Camo Studio interface. Now, right now, it's not that exciting. Everything's grayed out. And the reason for that is I, I don't have anything connected. So I can't go into the camera settings. I can't make any changes there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this to the side. I could use my, I'm going to use my iPhone for this demo. I could use an Android device as well. So it's telling me that I have no devices connected. So I'll go to the app store on my phone and I'll look up Camo or Reincubate Camo. Make sure you get the right one, Reincubate Camo. And then I'll install it through the app store or open it if I already have it. Now that it's opened, I'm still not connected. So I just have to plug it in. So I'm just gonna plug in my phone to my computer using a USB connector and there we are, we're live. And I do recommend getting a USB extension cable. I put it over on an overhead arm or I'll put it on a tripod or a suction cup and that'll allow me to have more flexibility. In this video, I'm moving this around with my hand. So it's, you know, you wouldn't really do that if you're using it as a, as a camera. There's different modes that I can put the camera into. Some that are, you know, fun little modes, but normal mode or portrait mode. Those are our common ones that we might use. Uh, like I say, I'll put it on a tripod, tripod in order to keep it stable. But moving it around is neat because I can show objects in my environment. Later on in the demo, I'm going to show you working with a circuit board on a Mac. I also get different resolutions that I can use. The higher resolutions are part of the Pro subscription. So it'll let you know if you haven't activated, it'll tell you what's part of Pro and what's not. But you can put in some different novelty and some masking things in here that are a lot of fun. I, you know, for example, if I want to do 8-bit, I can turn it into an 8-bit, make it look like I'm in the retro arcade in here. But for the most part, I just leave it at normal um, unless I have something special to do. It gives me a selection of lenses, which is kind of interesting. So here's an ultra-wide lens. So you can see my, my dining room table here. And you can see I've got all these things here. I can get a, a larger view of what's happening. I often keep it just in uh, the normal mode. But here's telephoto. Now with the telephoto lens, you'll notice that it's not focusing as much as I'd like it to right now. So I, instead of autofocus, what I can do is I can actually control the focus. So I can go in here and let's say I want to, you know, really go on to something very specific in the with the telephoto lens. I can actually choose the point that I want to focus on and use the slider bar in order to do that focus. There's some other options that I have. I'll show you in a moment as well. I'll put it back to autofocus. So another thing that I can do is I can choose um, to do a selfie. So use the camera on the front to do a selfie if I'd like. Switch the camera around. And I can also go in and choose which uh, microphone or which, uh, which microphone on the camera is going to capture my voice. I can also have a bunch of different fun presets. M my favorite is the orc attack. It makes me look like the Incredible Hulk, all green and, and angry. So that's a lot of fun. And I can also, with the pro version, put my own custom watermark on there, which can be handy if you want to. You can mirror the video. Here's a feature that I really like, it's the zoom. So what I'm gonna do is just put my uh, lens onto the wide, the, the one times lens, and it's actually my favorite. And then what I can do is I can zoom in. So notice how crisp that is when I'm, when I'm zooming right in. And here's a neat feature, down at the bottom, I can then drag around in order to find different parts of the object. So a little later on, I'm gonna use the Mac version of this, and I'll demonstrate how I can actually work with, say, a circuit board if I'm wanting to demonstrate something really up close. But look at here, I get really good uh, fidelity on here, so I can zoom into different things. 
And it's, it's very handy if you're wanting to show documents or artwork. Look at this. I'm on my tripod here. I'm going to zoom right in. You can see the notches. You can see the, the text there. And even on my water bottle, uh, not a water bottle, it's a cleaning for my glasses. Look, when I zoom in, you could, you could see that I could actually read the text here. Here's my glass cleaning bottle for my screens. A little further away, but look at that. I can actually get pretty good fidelity on that. And if this was on a tripod, that would be no problem at all. I'd be able to get really good text uh, ability on there to, to read the text on the bottle. So that can be quite handy. And I also get all the standard uh, different things that I can do for brightness if you're in a darker room. The auto brightness and such works really well because it's really using your camera's features to do a lot of this, but you can adjust them accordingly. Let's take a look at how we would use this same thing, but on a Mac. Here's Camo Studio on a Mac, same thing. I can go in and change lenses up. I just wanted to show you both a Windows and a Mac environment. So you can see I'm zooming in this case here, I'm zooming in on a circuit board. So I have a little IoT device here that I'm going to use. And again, if I'm using the, uh, the uh, scroll around so I can move around that object, in this case, my camera's mounted on that arm, that overhead arm that I showed a little earlier. So it's nice and stable and steady. Um, you, any movement you're seeing might be me bumping the desk, but generally it's very stable. And again, I can go in and I'm on telephoto here, but if I go to wide, so again, this is my favorite uh, lens. I can zoom in on that and ultra wide to go way out where I can point things out. But I normally myself keep it on wide and then zoom in. Here's the book from the beginning of the video where I want to show people some of the artwork here. You can see I'm getting it uh, from the overhead shot. I'm getting this nice overview of the pages. Maybe I want to go a little bit wider. This is more appropriate for art as opposed to a document camera. So if I want to, so this is, you know, the entire book, I'm showing you the art. So if I want to show you that big giant book, here I am, nice overhead shot. I can show you the art, talk to you about this document. Now here I am zoomed right in. So now I can see one piece of art and I can now zoom around. And just like I did with Windows, I can move around the object without the need for me to move the object. I can move the object, obviously, so I can take the book and move it around. But here I can find, let's say, a page or something I want to share with you. Zoom out. I can go in and I can say, oh, check out this panel. This is me moving the book. So let's say I want to go in there and show you a specific panel. We're talking about art. Text is also very easy to share. I can zoom in and out so that we can read the text together. Really handy if I have a book that I want to share with my audience. I really like this feature. It's very cool. Wouldn't it be cool to have different camera angles to engage our audience? To be able to show objects on our desk, documents, and point at things? Not just that same static talking head that's always in our meeting videos. We can make things a lot more dynamic